Hello everyone, in this video I am going to tell you about pneumonia. So pneumonia is an inflammatory condition of the lung primarily affecting the small air sacs known as alveoli. These alveoli are then filled up with uh, fluid, pus or even blood in some cases making it difficult to breathe in that particular person. So what is the classification of this pneumonia? So pneumonia is quite uh, broadly uh, categorized. So I have tried to write almost all the classification that you will read in different sort of books or notes. So etiological, it can be divided into infective or non-infective. In case of infective, that means the infection can be caused by either virus, then it is viral pneumonia, bacteria, bacterial pneumonia, fungus, fungal pneumonia, parasitic, parasitic pneumonia. So these are the four basic infective causes that leads to the pneumonia. In case, if you will see the non-infective cases, then in uh, in the non-infective cases, it can be due to toxins, certain toxins can cause pneumonia, chemicals or in case of aspiration also, it can lead to pneumonia. Now, you will see the morphological type. So, morphology is basically nothing but the part of the lung which is, you know, affected due to pneumonia. So, if the whole lobe is involved, then it is known as lobar pneumonia. If the bronchus area is involved mainly, then it is bronchopneumonia. And if the interstitial lining is involved, then it is interstitial pneumonia. On the basis of duration, it can be acute, chronic or subacute. Acute, that means that pneumonia subsides within three weeks. Like the patient came to you and you gave him medicine and his symptoms and everything, he is alright and the bacteria or the virus or the fungus or the parasite is gone from the body within three weeks. Like the uh, pneumonia... Uh, subside within three weeks it is acute if it subsides from three to eight weeks then it is subacute and if it, in some cases uh, it will not subside like it will go for a chronic sort of time then it is chronic pneumonia on basis of clinical like the clinical basis like on clinics what we will see it can be primary or secondary primary due to any of the cause like infective non infective directly the pneumonia is occurring secondary means uh, uh, the patient is Im either immunocompromised or having some another uh, pathology in the body and uh, later on he is contracting pneumonia typical or atypical typical means uh, basically uh, the pneumonia which is caused by the typical microorganism which is the most commonly found the so most commonly caused uh, by some organisms so that comes under typical and atypical are those organisms which are rare which rarely cause pneumonia and their symptoms are also different from the typical ones community acquired and hospital acquired so community acquired and hospital acquired means community acquired that is uh, in the community or outside the hospital care or the medical care facilities and hospital acquired as the name suggests that occurs within the healthcare facility or the hospitals so this is the basic definition or the uh, classification of pneumonia now we will read about the uh, first most important and the first type of pneumonia it is community acquired pneumonia so what is this community acquired pneumonia the pneumonia which is contracted by the person outside the healthcare system that means in the surroundings in the society where we live uh, with our family in such uh, places when we will contract the pneumonia then it is known as community acquired pneumonia it is also known as cap so cap is the most common type of pneumonia overall so if we will see among all the pneumonias uh, community acquired pneumonia is the most common type now we will uh, see the microbiology it is very important as uh, the organisms which are causing the community acquired pneumonia so i have tried to uh, you know categorize different type of uh, bacteria or viral or whatever the organism which is causing uh, community acquired pneumonia so bacteria is also uh, subdivided into typical and atypical typical i have already told you which most commonly which are present in the environment which causes the pneumonia so typical bacterial causes of community acquired pneumonia are streptococcus pneumoniae it is also known as pneumococcus it is the most common cause so Whenever in MCQ, if uh, someone asks the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia or the most common cause of pneumonia, you have to mark streptococcus pneumonia. It will be the first answer. So the most common cause is streptococcus pneumonia. It is also known as pneumococcus. Second, uh, 
हीमोफिलस इन्फ्लुएंजे स्टेप्टोकोकस ओरियस क्लेबसेला निमोनिए मोरक्सेला कैटेरालिस एंड सुडोमनाज एरेक्स एरोगिनोसा सो दीज आर ऑल द यू नो बैक्टीरियल कोजेज विच आर टिपिकली कोजिंग द कॉम्यूनिटी एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया एंड द इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट हेयर इज दैट सुडोमनाज एरेक्शन एरेगनोसा इज मोस्ट कॉमनली कोज फॉर हॉस्पिटल एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया सो मोस्ट कॉमन कोज ऑफ हॉस्पिटल एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया इज सुडोमनाज एरेगनोसा एंड ए टिपिकल बैक्टीरिया विच कोज इज कॉम्यूनिटी एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया इज माइक्रोप्लाज्मा निमोनिए क्लेमाइडिया निमोनिए एंड लीजनेला स्पेसिस दीज आर द थ्री ए टिपिकल टाइप ऑफ बैक्टीरियल कोजेज विच कोज द कॉम्यूनिटी एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया सो वेन एवर इन एग्जामिनेशन इफ सम वन आज कॉम्यूनिटी एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया एंड स्टेप्टोकोकस निमोनिया और निमोकोकस इज नॉट गिवन देन यू हैव टू मार्क माइक्रो प्लाज्मा निमोनिया एज द सेकेंड मोस्ट कॉमन को कोज ऑफ कैप ओके एंड द थर्ड मोस्ट कॉमन कोज इज हेमोफिलस इन्फ्लुएंजे so this is all about the bacterias now the viral so the viral which can cause community acquired pneumonia they can be influenza virus adenovirus human uh, meta pneumovirus and respiratory synecdical virus it is also known as rsv so these are all the you can say causative organisms or the most common uh, bacterias and viruses that will uh, cause the community acquired pneumonia now we will see the pathophysiology of community acquired pneumonia so as you can see in this diagram this is an alveoli and this is the alveolar exudate and these are our blood vessels so basically microorganism enter the respiratory tract via micro aspiration from the oropharynx this is the most common route like via aspiration uh, from the oropharynx it is the most common route from which the organism will enter and uh, after this after entering from the oropharynx hematogenous spread or spread from an infected pleural or mediastinal space will take place so most of the cap pathogens are found in the normal alveolar microbiota that means that most of the these organisms which we have uh, seen here these all of these organisms are most commonly found in our uh, alveoli itself so they usually attack whenever there is alteration in the host defenses that means alveolar macrophages activity if it is decreased in cases of some infection in cases of some immuno depression or immuno compromised patient then these will uh, attack the host so it can also be in cases of surfactant protein a and d like we already know that surfactant protein is very much important to clear out all the you know waste material and all the pathogens from the uh, in form of mucus or cuff outside of our alveoli or in case of immunocompromised host so i have already told you like in these three cases mainly these uh, normal alveolar micro biota that means these normal uh, uh, alveolar these bacteria or uh, various pathogens they will attack the host itself all this condition can ultimately lead to the overgrowth of microbes leading finally to the pneumonia infection now infection will occur then it will lead to the formation of alveolar exudate because various macrophages and they will come and they will attack the uh, you know uh, bacteria or pathogens that will lead to the formation of alveolar exudate and mainly neutrophils neutrophils will come in these cases and most common uh, as neutrophil are the most common wbc that are present in case of alveolar exudate so this is the basic uh, you can say pathophysiology overview uh, in case of community acquired pneumonia now we will see uh, regarding the pathophysiology a very important topic in the community acquired pneumonia only so this is the uh lenex stages of typical pneumonia so lenex stages of typical pneumonia basically have four stages that we will uh, read in this notes so basically what are those four stages it will be congestion it will be red hepatization it will be gray hepatization and it will be resolution so these are the four stages like which Uh, we will study in case of typical pneumonia so what are these stages these are nothing these are basically whenever the pathogen will enter our lungs and 
how will our body will react and what are the you can say step by step process that are happening inside the human body and uh, like what our defenses are doing and what is the like symptoms are presenting so these are the like things like which are happening in the lungs so first we will see congestion so first of all there will be congestion present in the first 24 hours like patient will feel congested and during it is present during the first 24 hours and one to two days you can say and intraalveolar fluid will be present and it is proteinaceous in nature so intraalveolar fluid will be present in case of congestion and proteinaceous nature will be there vascular engorgement numerous bacteria with small number of neutrophils as we have already read in the previous notes that uh, the alveolar exudate mainly neutrophils will be there so this is the first stage like the first stage of the pneumonia will be congestion second stage will be red hepatization it is also known as consolidation it is also known as consolidation it is present during three to four days and alveolar exudate will be present here in high quantity in very high amount with both wbc is also increased and rbc is over the roof in these cases like along with neutrophils and fibrin also so due to this increase the fluid leads to uh, uh, leaks to the heavy look of the lungs because you know rbc is very much uh, uh, increased in red hepatization stage during third to four days that's why it is also known as red hepatization so rbc is very much increased in this case third stage as we will study here is uh, gray hepatization so what is this gray hepatization it is present during five to eight days and rbc breakdown and these rbc which are present in the second stage red hepatization they will break and leads to change in color as the color changes so uh, it will lead to the name gray hepatization because neutrophils are like increased but the fibrin which is maximum fibrin is present so if the question come in exam where in which stage of the pneumonia or the typical pneumonia maximum fibrin is present it is during the gray hepatization because as this fibrin and the rbc breaks that will lead to the gray color now the fourth and the last stage you can say of the linux stages of typical pneumonia it will be uh, resolution so what is this resolution it will occur after eight days exudated clear up by my macrophages so macrophages will come and they will clear up this all these things that are present in the alveoli and various enzyme and these exudate is then cuffed up in sputum or drained via lymph so these are the main four stages that you have to remember because questions are asked from this like in which stage which point is important or the days like congestion is from one to two days red hepatization is three to four days gray hepatization is five to eight days and dissolution is more than eight days so this typical pathophysiology is mainly for pneumonia that is caused by typical microbes most commonly it is uh, basically for streptococcus pneumoniae as this affects a large and continuous area of the lobe of the lung hence it is the basic pathophysiology for lobar pneumonia also so lobar pneumonia pathophysiology is also these four points so lobar pneumonia also comes under a typical type of pneumonia so lobar type of pneumonia also come under typical type of pneumonia so this is all about the pathophysiology of community acquired pneumonia so now we will see what are the clinical manifestation that occurs in the patient so if you will see the clinical manifestation so first of all there will be uh, high grade fever with chills and dry gurs. so patient will be having high grade fever with chills and dry gurs. sweating will be there productive cough will be present as productive cough is very important point because it helps us differentiate between uh, different type of pneumonias so in case of community acquired pneumonia it will be productive cough with sputum and it is mainly rusty sputum it is also known as rusty sputum in case of community acquired pneumonia or the pneumonia which is caused by pneumococcus or most commonly by streptococcus pneumonia or pneumococcus so it is also known as rusty sputum rusty sputum is present in case of cap and sputum it can it is of mucoid purulent and blood type of characteristics 
of the sputum pleuritic chest pain can be present dyspnea can also be present in these patient and pain in deep inspiration so these patient will uh, feel pain while inspiring the air like whenever they are taking in the air then in case of deep inspiration there will be pain present in these patients and some other common symptoms are nausea vomiting fatigue headache myalgias and arthralgias so these are all the clinical manifestation or you can say clinical symptoms that the patient will present with what are the physical examination that we can do so whenever the patient will come in then he will be having tachypnea as a physician we should see that if it is if his breathing is fast or slow so tachypnea will be present in these patients the tactile fermentus is also increased in these patient crackles or pleural friction rub the sound will be heard like uh, whenever you will uh, try to listen the lungs of this patient via stethoscope you will listen the sound dull or flat percussion can be present due to uh, the alveoli are filled up with uh, exudate so in that case due to the present of exudate dull or flat percussion will be seen bronchial breath sound are also seen so these are all upon the physical examination of these patient who are having pneumonia so what are the diagnosis that we can do in case of pneumonia so if it comes to the diagnosis uh, both clinical and physical examination are important in order to find the correct diagnosis as i have already told about the symptoms and the physical examination and they really helps in finding out the diagnosis about the pneumonia apart from that chest x ray is very important and in many cases ct is more Uh, like you can say informative as compared to chest x ray so chest x ray it is required to differentiate cap from other lung condition as there are various conditions which can cause the same symptoms for example uh, interstitial lung diseases in case of patient of emphysema so we have to like uh, do chest x ray and ct of such patient to differentiate cap from other lung condition so as you can see here i have uh drawn a lung <laughs> don't mind the diagram is quite absurd but what i have tried to explain here is see in this case the pneumonia affect this particular lobe of the lung so this is mainly lobar pneumonia and in case of bronco pneumonia it is basically basal in the basal part and bilaterally it is present in both the lungs so lobar pneumonia will be present so whenever we will see in chest x ray only one lobe particular lobe will be involved it is the characteristic feature of lobar pneumonia while in case of bronco pneumonia it will be scattered in both the lung bilaterally it will be present and like these patches are present so uh, doing the ct or the chest x ray of both of these can help us differentiate between the both types now sputum culture via bronchoscopy is also an important uh, you can say diagnostic method which can help us diagnose the pneumonia as more than 25 wbc and less than 10 uh, squamous epithelial cells to be appropriate for the culture proper culture urine antigen test can also be done in case of streptococcus pneumonia and legionella pneumophilia so urine antigen tests are important in case of these two microbes and pcr and nasopharyngeal swabs for viral and atypical bacteria in case of uh, atypical bacteria which are mycoplasma chlamydia and legionella species in such cases we can do pcr diagnosis and also for viral pneumonias in case of serology uh igm titers will be increased up to four fold so serology can also be helpful uh, not exactly in finding the type of pneumonia or the pneumonia infection but it will help us differentiate that there is some infection going on within the lungs and biomarkers for example c reactive protein as it uh, if it is increased it can help identification of the disease worsening or treatment failure so in many cases the treatment fails so the disease worsens so if c reactive protein is keep on increasing it will tell us about the treatment failure or the worsening of the disease so this is all about the diagnosis and the clinical features and the physical examination now we will come to the last part of the community acquired pneumonia which is the treatment and also it is the most important part as the categorization of the 
community acquired pneumonia treatment is very uh, you can say specific uh, like the categorization is done in such a way that it is very important from examination perspective and also in clinical practices so treatment is basically uh, differentiated between the outpatients and the inpatients outpatients basically uh, the patients uh, like opd patients on the opd patients so in this also the category is divided into outpatient category is also divided into two parts first these patients are previously healthy and no antibiotics used in the past three months so the patients who are previously healthy and they came to you for the first time and they haven't even used any kind of antibiotic in the past three months so in these patients what will be the treatment for community acquired pneumonia it will be a macrolide that can be clarithromycin uh, 500 mg bed that means two time day and azithromycin 500 mg once and then 250 mg qd so this is the main you can say drug of choice in case of these outpatients who are previously healthy and no antibiotic used in past three months or we can also use doxycycline 100 mg bed so this is for patient who are previously healthy and no antibiotic used in the past three months those outpatients will be given this treatment for 10 to 14 days now patients who are opd patients but they have comorbidities like they have some other problem also in their body and they have used any any, any kind of antibiotic in the past three months in those patients we will use respiratory fluoroquines or you can say respiratory fluoroquines are the drug of choice in those patients uh, specifically moxifloxacin uh, 400 mg qd uh, jamif or you can use jamifloxacin uh, 320 mg qd or levofloxacin 750 mg qd this also uh, will be given for about 8 to 10 days or we can give beta lactam for example amoxiclav and any macrolide macrolide for example we have read earlier clarithromycin or azithromycin so this is the treatment for the patients outpatients with comorbidities or with who have used antibiotic in the past three months now the pay uh, the important classification uh, it is the inpatients patients who are in the hospitals or who are admitted in the icu settings so patients in patients are uh, further categorized into non icu patient and icu patients so in case of non icu patients we will start the treatment with respiratory fluoroquinones uh, that is moxifloxacin 400 mg iv or per oral qd or levofloxacin 750 mg iv or per oral qd so this is the first drug that we will use in case of non icu respiratory fluoroquinones and then we can also give beta lactam and macrolide macrolide you have already learned which macrolides uh, either clarithromycin or azithromycin and in such patients who are uh, admitted in the hospital but they are known icu but if pseudomonas is suspected pseudomonas aeruginosa is suspected then in those cases beta lactam with macrolides and we will also add meropenem or piperacillin tazobactam to such patient if pseudomonas is suspected in case of known icu patients who are admitted so this is all about non icu patient now we will move to the icu patient so in icu patients beta lactam are given with azithromycin that is a macrolide or fluoroquinolones can be given and in such cases if uh, this uh, uh, community acquired uh, mrsa that is methicillin resistant streptococcus aureus streptococcus aureus which is mrsa is suspected then we will also add uh, beta lactam macrolide plus linozolid or vancomycin so vancomycin or linozolid is added in case of community acquired MRSA is suspected and if pseudomonas is suspected then we will add meropenem or piperacillin tazobactam so this whole treatment guideline is according to the latest harrison edition so i hope you understand everything that is there about community acquired pneumonia and this treatment is very important and this topic is also very important and i hope you understand this all very clearly so thank you very much